Hi, I'm Brian Johnson. I'm from QIMR Berghofer Medical Research Institute, and I'm a senior research officer over there, and I also serve as the MARC scientist for the Mosquito and Arbovirus Research Committee of Australia that's centered here in southeast Queensland. So biting midges are actually small flies, so they're small biting flies. They're about usually one to two millimeters in length, so they're much smaller than mosquitoes which lends to their name, often people refer to them as noceums. Here they're also commonly referred to as sand flies, but they're actually a fly and not a true sand fly. So biting midges breed predominantly in the mud associated with the intertidal zone, so you often just think of mangroves and then intertidal creeks. That's where most of our biting midge breed. Select midges can breed in sandy beaches and constructed canal estates. And there are midges that can breed in bushland habitat and the organic soil associated with that. So biting midges will not breed in the rock wall canals that are you know, prevalent throughout Redland City Council, but they will breed in the sandy beach canals of con constructed canal estates. So, Biting midges are not a true public health risk as they have, do not transmit any diseases to humans in Southeast Queensland, but the health risk is actually just nuisance. So it's just the high nuisance that they can create. And then in select individuals, they can have a severe allergic reaction to the, the midge bites. Council doesn't treat for biting midge because midges breed in large areas in protected natural habitat. So you have to think of the intertidal zone with the mangroves. Those areas are protected under state fisheries regulation. So the products that we use you know, are not effective in those environments. They're also protected to protect fisheries and other wildlife in those habitats. So we do not treat for midge predominantly for those reasons. So to protect yourself from biting midge, so the easiest things to do are wear long trousers, long sleeve shirts, and again, you want to avoid the early morning, late out, you know, early evening hours when the midges are most active. So you know the dawn and dusk periods. And then you can also put in midge screens around the house. So these will typically have to be larger or they're smaller mesh than your mosquito screens. So common mosquito screens will not keep mesh outside because they're actually too large. And then. Midges also, because they're quite small, they prefer still air. So just having a fan moving when you're, you say, in your you know, covered outdoor spaces, you have a ceiling fan or a pedestal fan, those will actually keep midges away quite well. <laughs>